Hey, what's up, everybody? Timothy Shockley Jr. here, uh, Dream Worldwide. Thank you so much for tapping in with your boy. Hopefully, you guys have had a phenomenal, phenomenal day, okay? Remember, I'm only here to encourage you, educate you, and empower you to your highest levels of success. And regardless of where you've been in life, understand you have an opportunity. It was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, as long as you have breath in your body, you have an opportunity. And if you're watching me right now, that means you still have an opportunity to pursue your dreams and your goals. Real quick, um, if you're not uh, connected to our daily motivational text group, please text the words Awaken the Dream to 702 518 5820. Text the words Awaken the Dream to 702 518 5820. You can also uh, uh, get connected through our academy at dreamworldwideacademy.online uh, where we discuss, discuss a wide range of topics such as faith, spirituality, leadership, entrepreneurship, uh, economics, science and technology, entertainment, entrepreneurship, list goes on, right? We are concerned about developing the leader within you, helping you understand and recognize your leadership potential. You all have potential. What is potential? Well, potential is untapped power. It's what should be, but what hasn't become yet. Okay, so uh, you can do that at any time throughout this. If you want to donate or anything to our organization, you can do so um, via Cash App, Money Sign, Dream Worldwide HQ. Now, um, this specific video is addressing um, an interview that was done by... Uh, Derek Grace or Derek Lord Grace, and uh, I don't know what the other guy's name is, but uh, he has a uh, podcast called uh, Rich and Unemployed. Rich and Unemployed, and I want to give this as best of context as I can uh, because I think this is a really good topic. And the topic I really want to discuss is no religion, no Bible. No religion, no Bible. Now, the interview, it was a phenomenal interview, right? I'm, I'm into interviews and podcasts, just like many of you guys. Uh, and um, apparently, uh, Derek Grace, I've, 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 I've been following him for a while. Um, and let me just say this, I admire and respect uh, the man that he is. Uh, he's a man, um, seems like he's a man of integrity. Uh, he's compassionate. Um, he's a leader. He's an alpha male. Um, he's a, a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he's an educator, a teacher. And, um, I think he's in a real estate and some other things, uh, robotics. And uh, I think got some video game stuff going on. So, uh, very, very, um, interesting and dynamic man. Okay. And that's from a man to a man. OK, um, from what I've observed uh, just through online and watching different videos or whatnot, uh, he is he cares about his family, first and foremost. Uh, he cares about his family. Uh, he I think he's in the financial, lit the financial literary, 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 the financial space, the financial literacy space, um, teaching private banking and. Uh, in-home banking and I think he has a board game out. So just very, very dynamic and very needed for uh, this uh, time and space in our in our world, especially amongst uh, melanated individuals, uh, just really understanding the power of leverage, uh, investing, um, all in uh, investing, uh, you know, teaching our kids how to take care of money, uh, teaching our kids how to love one another. And you can see that he has that, that love for his family. And, uh, and, and so I think he's retired his mom and, and I think his dad is working with him, um, in business. And so it's just a phenomenal setup. Okay. And he's, you know, from what I understand, he's worked really, really hard, uh, at building his brand. But the, the, the specific piece I want to um, so salute to Derek Lord Grace, but the thing I want to, the thing I want to really point out is, the, the, the thing about religion, okay? Uh, no religion, no Bible. So on the podcast, 
um, they were just discussing, you know, a lot of different things, you know, religion, psychedelics, this and that. And um, the cool thing about everything is that uh, hold on one second. Just gather myself real quick. The cool thing about um, the interview is that they start, they brought up religion, right? And I think they, they bring it up in a way to where it's like, I got questions. You know, I don't know about this whole thing, God and Jesus and this and that. And I don't know about the Bible. I don't understand it. Um, just a lot of different um, variations when it comes to spirituality, faith, the Bible, Jesus, God, all that stuff. And so uh, uh, the rich and unemployed was just asking him about like, changing his name and Derek was like, yeah, I lost followers, you know, and I guess, you know, Christians or whatever has been in his inbox talking about, you know, I guess it's been very threatening and, you know, how can you ever call yourself Lord and this and that. And, and so, you know, and so Derek was very transparent with that. Uh, and then he went on to say, you know, um, just some different comparisons, you know, what basically a Lord, you know, uh, what does a Lord do? He, prov a Lord provides, has land, has has a kingdom, and all these different things, right? So he's kind of going on, on that uh, note, and and then uh, rich and unemployed was like, you know, how did you get to this point, you know? And he was just talking about the inner work that he's doing. Uh, he's talking about the different psychedelics he's been on, uh, and just really just, you know, that meditative state of of just working things out and and figuring out who he is, you know, as a man, as a leader, as an entrepreneur. And I just I, I, I just think it was good. It was it's fascinating. Right. Because at the end of the day, we all have questions. Like even if you a hardcore believer and you in the faith and you a pastor, teacher, whatever, like you can't say at some point you didn't have a, a, a question about something that you was teaching or something that you was taught to believe or this and that. And so I just thought it was very, 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 very good. Right. It was good because like it's the, that's the struggle that we all shy away from because everybody, even some people, they be like, oh, no, this is the, this is it. This is, it. you know, and at the end of the day, I have my, my beliefs, my core beliefs about faith. Right. And, and these are my convictions, right? These are my convictions because of my experiences, because of, because of the path that I've been on, because of how I was raised and, 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 and some of the things that have been revealed to me, even through meditation and prayer and all these, in my life experiences and so on. And so I think at the end of the day, for those of you out there, you have to respect that man's journey. And that's what we don't do uh, in today's time. We don't respect people's culture. We don't respect their journey, their experiences. We don't, we don't respect their point of view. Understand that somebody, I respect men and women with points of view. Even if it's different than mine, I respect it because at least you have the, the audacity and the courage to, to come out and say, you know what? I believe this. I'm going to do this. Like you talked about the tattoos. He was like, I did that for me. He did that for the benefit of me. So I, I can get on my grind and not be complacent and idle. He said, because I know me, I'm a procrastinator. And he said, if I, w I didn't do all this, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I respect that. Right. I respect men and women who step out in faith and do uncommon things to, to reap uncommon results. So I salute uh, Derek Lord Grace in the aspect of saying, you know what? I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. The Bible doesn't make sense. This, all this don't make sense, right? I'm not going to just believe something. What I, what I heard him say is basically, I'm not going to just believe something just because you say it's true or just because my mama say it's true or my daddy say it's true. He's like, basically, I'm paraphrasing. I want to find out for myself. He's on a journey. I'm on a journey. You on a journey. We all on a journey. There's no need to ridicule that man. There, there's no re reason to bash that man. He's taking care of his family. You got people out here who, who you got men and women of the cloth that don't even take care of their family. They, they don't, they, they don't, Paul, the apostle Paul said, you can prophesy, you can do this, you can do that. You can be the best dreamer, the best entrepreneur, the best leader. I'm paraphrasing. He said, but if you don't have love, you have profited nothing. And what I'm observing from him is that he seemed to have love for his family. That's the first ministry. 
Your family is the first ministry. We're all ministers of some sort. We, we, we all have influence in some area. But your family, your children, your children. He's teaching his children financial literacy. He's teaching his children how to use guns. He's teaching his children how to build businesses and the value of money and, and how to, the purpose of money and how to use money and how to leverage uh, assets and all these different things, liabilities. And, and he's t he is he is love is an expression. It's not only your belief, but it's an expression. And if you ask me, the greatest expression of love is how you treat your family. So get off that man. Get off that man. Now, on a side note, I want to clear up a couple things. I want to clear up a couple things. In our journey, in our quest to really find out who we are, we must understand as a foundation what the source is. Everything has a root. Everything has a stem. And in order to understand the mystery, we must first understand the history. In order to understand the mystery, we must first understand the history. In regards to Derek Lord Grace, he's a writer. He's an educator. He's a best-selling author. He wrote a book that did well and was able to provide for his family. And, and, you, know, you, know, and, you know, he was able to eat from the, the fruits of that labor. And he said that book was about his journey from age, like, as a young kid, to like 25, 26, or something like that. So he took his life experiences, his learnings, the demonstrations, all the things that he went through in his history. And he packaged it up and put it into book form. And he gave it to you guys. Now, I want to I want to say something to Derek. If you if you're watching this, understand that. That's all the Bible is. That's all the Bible is. The Bible is a collection of experiences, thoughts, meditations, prayers, songs, hymns, mysteries. It's, it's, a, it's a mysterious book. It's a mystical book that was written by a whole bunch of interesting people. Men in the Middle East. Here in the Western culture, we know we don't we don't understand the Bible. We don't understand the intention of the Bible. We don't understand anything about the Bible. But the Bible is a Middle Eastern, it's an Eastern text. That's why we don't understand it. It's a mystical book. It's a mystery book. It's it's symbolic. It's metaphorical. It's metaphysics. It's fundamental. There's a lot of different aspects of the Bible that we don't understand because it was not written to us. The Bible wasn't written to us. The Bible to me now to me, I don't know about anybody else, but to me. Is the book of principles. Principles. And it's something you understand as an author and as an educator. It's about principles. Values. Uh, I believe the Bible is a book of thought. Right? And it's something you understand too because you're a thinker. Because you have to think and write and meditate over what you write and edit. And you know, you, you know how the process goes. So the Bible to me is a book of thought. It's a book of psychology. Um, I think it's a book of wisdom. I think it's a book of principle. Uh, I think it's a book of value. I think it's a book about relationships and family and 
it's not a literal book. I think that's what I'm trying to get to you. I really want to point out the Bible is not a literal book. Right. And I think it gets messed up because we have people in the Western world that take the Bible literally. Now, there's fundamentals in the Bible, like love thy neighbor as thyself. Like, I think that's a fundamental principle. Love treating someone else as you wish to be treated. I think that's a fundamental principle. I don't think this. I think that's as simple as it gets. It's as fundamental as it gets. And that's not even literal. (laughs) <laughs> because there's a gray areas in that, right? There's gray areas in that. And we've all have encountered a situation to where it's like, man, I ain't, man, man, you, boy, you got one time to cross me. You know what I'm saying? I think we've all been there. So just trying to get into our subconscious mind, the idea of loving thy neighbor as we love ourselves, or loving our enemies or, or blessing one another. Like, I think these are fundamental values and principles that we all can take part in. And I think you alluded to something like that on the podcast. But the Bible is. The Bible is. I don't even know. The Bible is is kind of what you want it to be. Because at the end of the day, we have to live a life. We all have different hands. We've all been dealt different hands. We and we had responsible and how we play that hand. And we have the power. Like you said, you are a provider. You got kids, you got a domain, you got a king, you got a kingdom. Yes, you are a lord. You're not the lord, but you are a lord. Yes, you are a god. Yes, you are a king. I will agree with you. You are a resource, though, not the source. That's just what I believe. I believe you are a resource. Not the source. I believe I'm a resource, not the source. I believe I'm a king. I'm a God. I'm a Lord. Right. I believe I have power to create, to dream, to imagine, to provide, to create ways, to work miracles, to heal the sick and raise the dead. I believe I have that power and I believe just from here in the interview, you have that power too. So that's what we agree, right? But there's an almighty God. There is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, right? There is uh, the supreme ruler. You're a ruler. I'm a ruler, but there's a supreme ruler. And there's a, you have a kingdom, but there's a, Greater kingdom. Right. And that's just what I believe. Right. But I think these things have to be worked out. These things have to be <laughs> like like you said, like the inner work, you know, trying to figure things out, trying to sort things out, clarity and all these different things. Like that's a part of the process. The Bible says that we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Like We have to work out our own ideals in terms of like how we want to manifest our future, right? We, we, we have to work out those ideals. But the key is to believe. The key is to have faith. And you an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a man of faith. Um, and I think as an, just on an entrepreneurial level, I think you would, you would agree that it takes a lot of faith. <laughs> it takes a lot of belief in what you're doing. It takes a lot of you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of psychology and a lot of, you talked about marketing, marketing and psychology, right? So I, I think there's a lot of, and I think you would agree there are a lot of just variables that are similar between the Bible, faith, belief, and life. And some people call it the book of life, right? So with that said, man, uh, I just want to encourage you, man. Just keep, you know, just keep keep on the journey, bro. And keep on the journey, man. And, uh, you know, we have to work out our own salvation. We have to work out our own, our own faith. You know, I've had questions since I was 10 years old, right? And I was just blessed to have a dad in my life who really, like, just showed me the ropes and really, like, let me explore and, and, and find my way, bro. You know what I'm saying? 
And I'm thankful that I had a father. You sound like you, had, you got a great guy in your life too, you know. So I'm, I'm thankful that I had a father, father who modeled um, what it meant to 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 be a leader. You know what I'm saying? Leaders um, have to go through the discovery period, right? We 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 have to go through the the valley of trying to figure out, you know what I'm saying, what it is that we believe, what are our convictions, what are our values, what are our principles, what are our morals, our ethics, and all these different things, right? So it's just a journey. It's just a journey. And um, and we have to work those things out. And so I salute you, you know, uh, and you are a Lord. You are a God. You are a king. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, John chapter 10, verse 34, Jesus says something powerful. Uh, they was questioning him because he was talking about uh, how he he was uh, he was God in the flesh, you know. He was God. He, he was claiming to be God, right? And they was they was trying to get on him. And he responded with this. He said, is it written in your law that I said ye are gods? And it's also quoted in Old Testament, Psalms chapter 82, verse 6, right? And so, yes, we have that capacity. We have that power. We have that image. We have that likeness. And so, yes, we are <laughs> as gods. As a matter of fact, God said to Adam and Eve, you know, after they went to the, the apple or whatever, the plum, they ate, the, ate up the tree. He said, they have become one of us as gods. They have become one of us as gods, knowing good and evil, right? So, there's some... So there's some things that I'm like, yeah, you, you know, you, you, you may be on to something, but at the same time, it's like, you know, things just have to be worked out, you know, and I, I think you're on that path and that journey. And I'm excited, man. And uh, I salute, I, I salute you, bro. You know, I salute you and what you've done and your family and to everybody else, man. You know, I think uh, even as a man of faith, I think we are to lift each other up, man. There's no reason to get in nobody's inbox. There's no reason to down nobody. There's no reason to talk bad about nobody. That does nothing. The Bible says that love cast out fear. Love covers the most to a sin. It's love. The greatest of these three, faith, hope, love, love, right? If you don't have love, you profit at nothing, right? So it does no good to go to somebody's inbox and say, hey, you you ain't doing it right or you ain't believing right, this and that, or I'm going to hurt you. I'm gonna, I'm, that's just nonsense. That That's hate. That's evil. It's demonic. It does nothing for a person. It does nothing but make people harden their hearts, you know what I'm saying? So... That's not in the cards. That's not God. That ain't that ain't even an expression of God. That is that is pure evil. So um, anyway, man, I just want to throw that that out there and uh, to to the guy over at uh, Rich and Unemployed, man, blessings to you. Uh, Seems like you're on a journey as well. But just understand the Bible is not meant to be understood. Um, that's why we have teachers and preachers and ministers and all these different people trying to interpret the Bible. We have scholars. We have so the best, really, the best way to to, to figure out the Bible is to is to look towards the Eastern world. Um, the mystics and the rabbis and people who actually understand um, the context of the Bible, because we in the Western we don't we don't understand nothing about the Bible, bro. And uh, and if we really un if, if we really get into the nitty gritty of the Bible, we would realize that the Bible is really not a religious book, not at all, not even close, not even close. I think it's been interpreted wrong. I think people have used the Bible to enslave people and and like you said, you know. Uh, force you know different ideals down people's throats or whatnot but the bible is not a religious book at all so i agree no religion no bible okay no religion no bible but understand the bible is a mystical book it's a it's a it's a, it's a great mystery and uh and you know and, and you really have to you know be within a community or or be with someone who really understands that can explain it and and really uh, appropriated in a way that you can you, you can break it down and digest it and apply it to your life. Now, I love the New Testament even when it comes to the Gospels. And just understand this. You're an author, you're an educator, and whatnot. So understand that uh, the life you live is 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 your life, right? And we all have a Gospel, right? You got the Gospel of Mark. I mean, the, I mean, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? But you have a Gospel. I have a Gospel, right? We all have a Gospel. And I think um, it's our responsibility um, to give people the good news, right? Give people the gospel. Like what's, what's good in your life? What, ha how have you grown? What are you learning from? How are you doing it? And, I, and you're doing that. You're doing it with your curriculums and your books and all these different things. So you're sharing your gospel. 
you're sharing the good news, man. So just keep moving forward, bro. Uh, salute you and your family uh, and your future endeavors, business, and uh, everything uh, uh, connected to that. But there's no need to hate. There's no need to look at people sideways. You know, I respect those who have an opinion. I respect those who have a conviction, who have a uh, who have who have a point of view. I think it, it symbolizes strength and tenacity and courage, and um, you know, and and those are some of the best conversations to have, man. I think it makes the world a better place, and it allows us to get better and grow um, to our uh, maturity and whatever we're doing. Okay, so so want to throw a little piece in there, man. Uh, please like and share the video. If you want to be a part of our text community, please do so. Text the words Awaken the Dream to 702-518-5820. If you'd like to be a part of our academy, uh, go to dreamworldwideacademy.online. And uh, like and share, man. We're trying to get this message out across the world. But Derek, man, you, your family, much love to you. Uh, peace and blessings. Uh, rich and unemployed, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting the voices out. Keep sharing, you know, uh, doing what you do. Uh, we got to stick together. We got to make this world a better place. We got to contribute with our gifts, our talents, our skills. And that's how we serve. That's how we, that's how we become great. And, uh, and we believe, like Dr. Eric Thomas says, be phenomenal or be forgotten. Peace.